Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. One of the film industry's most famous actors and bad boys, Marlon Brando, was a mountain of a man who made his voice heard as much through activism as through his on-screen appearances. How Marlon Brando became so fat he could not act properly. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Marlon Brando, Hollywood's iconic bad boy. Marlon Brando was one of the most famous and influential actors of the second half of the 20th century. It's no secret that Marlon Brando was a lady killer. He married three different women and had at least 11 children in his life, though some reports say he may have had as many as 17. Marlon Brando Jr. was born April 3, 1924, Omaha, Nebraska. American motion picture and stage actor known for his visceral, brooding characterizations. Brando was the most celebrated of the method actors, and his slurred, mumbling delivery marked his rejection of classical dramatic training. His true and passionate performances proved him one of the greatest actors of his generation. Brando's mother, Dodie, was an actress and theatre administrator, and staunchly supported her son's passion in spite of his disapproving father, who was a salesman. He had a troubled childhood, writing in his autobiography that his mother preferred getting drunk to caring for us. He also opened up about the difficult relationship he shared with his father, revealing that Marlon Brando Sr. had a habit of telling me I would never amount to anything. Though Dodie's drinking affected Brando in his youth and beyond, she was known to be quite a character. Working as an actress and theatre administrator, she lived life in the fast lane, quite literally. First off, she was a woman who, heaven forbid, drove a car. While smoking cigarettes and wearing pants, that's trousers if you're not from America, Mrs Brando always wore underwear. All of these behaviours were considered rather risque for women during the early 20th century. At least now we know where he got his rebellious streak from. Perhaps Dodie was the real wild one. Brando was expelled from high school, allegedly for riding a motorcycle down the hallway, which forced his father to send him to Shattuck Military Academy in Faribault, Minnesota. Once there, Brando wrote that one night he climbed the bell tower, removed the 150-pound clapper, then carried the clapper 200 yards and buried it. In a stroke of genius, Brando then organised a committee to find out who was responsible. He was never caught, but got himself expelled anyway for other infractions. After that, in the spring of 1943, he moved to New York to live with his sister in Greenwich Village. In New York, Brando worked as an elevator operator at Best & Company, a department store. In Brando, Songs My Mother Taught Me, he wrote that he followed that gig with brief stints as a waiter, a short-order cook and a sandwich man. Brando was also a night watchman in a factory. Agent Irving Paul Swifty Lazar helped Brando get a $10 raise from $65 to $75 a week, for his Broadway debut in I Remember Mama. Lazar recalled how in 1945 Brando and his then-girlfriend Blossom Plum would sit silently for hours at a time listening to Lazar make deals over the phone. Brando's big break came through his starring role in Tennessee Williams' 1951 film A Streetcar Named Desire, but it was not his first time stepping into Stanley Kowalski's shoes. Brando made his motion picture debut in The Men, a powerfully realistic study of disabled World War II veterans. In preparation for his role, he spent a month in a hospital paraplegic ward. He received his first Academy Award nomination for his performance in A Streetcar Named Desire, Kazan's highly praised screen adaptation of the play, and went on to receive nominations for his performances in Viva Zapata and Julius Caesar. 
Also from this period is The Wild One, a low-budget drama in which he played the leader of an outlaw motorcycle gang. The film became one of Brando's most famous and served to enhance his iconoclastic image. It also contains one of Brando's most oft-quoted lines. When asked what it is he is rebelling against, his character responds, What do you got? Marlon was famous for method acting, which meant he could transform into the character he was playing, becoming them even when the cameras weren't rolling. Sometimes he clashed with writers and directors to taking his immersion too seriously, in one performance quite literally. To ensure his famously natural style of acting, Brando was known to chat with cast and crew members long after the director called action. Only when he felt ready to deliver his lines as naturally and conversationally as possible would Brando begin the scene. Brando's sensitive portrayal of a Union muscle man who testifies against his gangster boss in Kazan's On the Waterfront won for him the Best Actor Oscar and firmly established him as one of Hollywood's most admired actors. He had an overfeeding problem. In the 50s and 60s, Brando had fallen into a habit of binge eating, even nicknaming himself Bran Flakes. With his uncontrolled diet came a massive increase in his weight that posed a threat to his career. His friend, Carlos Fiore, would sometimes be sent by directors to fetch him from the coffee shops. He showed up so heavy to the set of Apocalypse Now that the director had to shoot him almost entirely in shadow. During filming of Apocalypse Now, Brando weighed over 21 stone, around 133 kilograms, forcing director Francis Ford Coppola to film him in almost total darkness. He was already heavy when I hired him and he promised me that he was going to get in shape and I imagined that I would if he were heavy. I could use that. But he was so fat he was very, very shy about it. He was very, very adamant about how he didn't want to portray himself that way. By the mid-1990s, Brando's weight was reported to have increased even more, leading to a number of different health issues, including type 2 diabetes. Brando had a lazy side that only a few people knew about. Quite often, he would fail to recall a part or all of his lines while filming. Brando notoriously relied on cue cards while filming, rather than memorising his lines. This came with a fair share of objections from crew members, but Brando insisted that the habit injected his performance with a realistic sense of spontaneity. He got away with his forgetfulness on the set of Superman by reading his lines from the young superhero's diaper, his ten-minute role as Jor-El, Superman's father, still earned him three million dollars. His attempts to pull off the same stunt in the scandalous 1972 film Last Tango in Paris by reading his lines from his co-star, Maria Schneider's backside hit the rocks. His new director, Bernardo Bertolucci was not willing to give him any special treatment on set. He had to learn his lines the hard way, like everybody else. The Godfather was his comeback, but he almost blew it. After ten years acting on the fringes of Hollywood, Brando was brought into a major picture, The Godfather. But there were conditions to his hiring. The film producer, Robert Evans, thought Brando was unbankable, so he had to jump through hoops to play Vito Corleone. Not only did he have to give an on-camera makeup test where he famously placed cotton balls in his mouth in order to look like an aging Italian mobster. After he was hired, Brando had to accept a lower fee than what he normally accepted and he had to accept financial responsibility if there were production delays based on his behaviour. On set, Brando was weird but he wasn't anywhere near as poorly behaved as he was on Mutiny on the Bounty. For all the oddities behind the scenes, Brando's performance was hailed as brilliant and won him an Oscar, which he turned down.
he refused to collect his second Best Actor Oscar. Brando was an activist who campaigned for many different causes, lending his support to the civil rights movement and Native American causes, among others. It was due to his belief that the Native Americans had been misrepresented by Hollywood that Brando refused to collect the second of his two Best Actor Oscars, given for his performance as Vito Corleone in 1972's The Godfather. The more famous Brando became, the harder he was to deal with. Marlon Brando was always a bit of a rake, but as he became a box office draw with roles like Stanley Kowalski in A Streetcar Named Desire, he also began to act out. His disgust with the Hollywood system led him to acting out on set and essentially not taking his directors or producers seriously. While on the set of what was meant to be Brando's crowning achievement, Mutiny on the Bounty, he took to hanging out with the Tahitian extras, speaking in a bizarre English accent and rewriting the script from day to day, or just ad-libbing whenever he felt like it. According to director Lewis Milestone, Brando was happy to bring the filming to a halt if it wasn't going his way. The film was a disaster on set and at the box office. It put a stop to Brando's career in Hollywood for a full decade. In the meantime, he acted in films that were far below his talents and became a laughing stock of mainstream Hollywood. He had a running feud with Frank Sinatra after they clashed over the leading role in the 1954 film On the Waterfront for which Brando would win his first Best Actor Oscar. Frank Sinatra started referring to Brando as Mumbles and said that he didn't go for that method crap. The pair's feud continued during the filming of 1955's Guys and Dolls, in which they starred together, with Brando purposely making mistakes during the filming of scenes to force multiple retakes. Marlon Brando was Hollywood's most inscrutable star. In his final self-hypnotherapy session, Brando spoke of a peaceful destination. His meditations had served their function, enabling the elderly man to parent his younger self and forgive his childhood fears. Marlon had struggled with health issues year before his lung failure in 2004. He was first hospitalised for pneumonia back in 2001. The recurring health problems disabled him to finish other projects as well. Shortly before his death, he was supposed to give his voice for a video game adaptation of The Godfather. However, Brando had managed to record only one single line. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn! What do you think about Marlon Brando, Hollywood's true rebel? Do you think Marlon Brando inherited his nature from his mother?